that. A while back, I made a video called The Downfall of Pokemon Cards. In it, I talked about how certain changes and events led to the hobby losing its magic. However, that all might change with the introduction of Scarlet and Violet, because with it comes some of the biggest changes the hobby has ever seen. You see, just like the mainline games, the TCG evolves and grows with each new generation, from minor design changes to whole new card types. But Scarlet and Violet also known as Generation 9, is about to take the hobby in a whole new direction. So let's jump into it. Starting off, the first big change you'll notice is this new silver border. Gone is that classic yellow border we've come to love over the past 24 years. Crazy to think that that yellow border has been there since the very beginning, and now it's just gone. <laughs> the reason behind this is to look more like the Japanese cards. They even got rid of the little set symbols they used to have. Now I'm going to try and keep all my opinions till the end of the video, but me personally, I think the grey border makes the normal cards look kind of worse. However, they make art cards look significantly better. Which brings me to the next big change, the rarity changes. One of the worst things about modern Pokemon card sets was the amount of redundant rarities clogging them up. Well, I'm proud to announce that rainbow rares along with some other irrelevant rarities are now a thing of the past. Art cards have now become the main chase cards in sets. This was a welcome change after the success of alternate art cards in recent sets, but they work a little differently than they did before. Art cards, or rather, illustration rares, are special variants of cards ranging from commons all the way up to ultra rares. Now, a lot of these chase cards might come across as underwhelming, being based off commons and such. I mean, I don't think people are going to be too keen on opening hundreds of packs for a Starly, but it's for that reason that they made them significantly easier to pull. Which brings me to my next point, the pull rates. They actually fixed it. Before, any card worth more than a bag of Doritos was straight up impossible to pull. But now, not only did they make art cards easier to pull, they made everything easier to pull. I know at first glance these still seem kind of high, but comparing it to the set we looked at in the last video, the difference is night and day. Pulling a secret rare is now essentially only 1 in 5 packs. That's amazing. Surely this must affect the price of cards though, right? It does, but not in the way you'd expect. Looking at Battle Styles' prices, a set that was notorious for shitty pull rates, we can see that prices aren't much different from Scarlet and Violets. It just goes to show that people care more about what's on the card than how rare it is. But that's not where the changes end, because they've also overhauled the layout of packs. Before, your typical pack would consist of 5 commons, 3 uncommons, 1 reverse hollow, and 1 rarer above. But now, you get 4 commons, 3 uncommons, 2 reverse hollows, and 1 guaranteed hollow rare or above. This is another great change. Not only are you guaranteed a hollow, but that extra reverse hollow makes a big difference. Because you remember those art cards we were talking about? Well, if you pull one, they will take the spot of one of the two reverses. Meaning, every time you open a pack, you now have three chances to get a hit. Hell, they even started ordering the pack properly, placing the rares at the end of the pack. Now I can sit here all day talking about changes, but the only real way to feel if that magic is back is by opening up some packs. Thanks to my good friend Gavinki, we cracked open 20 or so random boosters live to test it out. First time re reaction. Literally everything's a first time reaction and oh my god, look, Great Tusk. Already a hit. Very first one, it's Great Tusk. Interesting, tough to- Oh, he's- I think what's behind it? Oh, who cares, Claw? Golden Fisting Energy, bro, that's crazy. But I didn't, and then- hey! Good guy. I'm a rogue. Look at this guy, I like this guy, look at this guy. Zengus. Whoa! That's cool, look at that. Full art, EX Maridon. Out of 27, 27 cards, 27 packs. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 hits out of 27. Again, I gotta thank my homie Gavinki. If you want to see some of the craziest and most entertaining openings on the internet, go check him out and give him a follow. You won't regret it. And now it's time for It's Jahan's Objective Opinions. Now, to be completely honest with you guys, and I know this might just be me, I'm not really the biggest fan of art cards. I find a lot of the time, art doesn't really 
fit the Pokemon, or suit how rare the card is supposed to be. But this is to be expected, as art itself is subjective. Then again, I would take this over the shit show they had going before. I really like the changes they made to packs though. Getting rid of normal rares and having a hollow in every pack was such an overdue change. For the past 10 or so years, pulling a hollow might as well have been the same as pulling nothing at all. Yu-Gi-Oh actually did a very similar thing a couple years ago, and I'm glad to see Pokemon follow suit. Overall, I think I would give these changes a solid 7 out of 10. Just like the video games they are based off of, it's not perfect, but it's definitely a step in the right direction. So what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. I love hearing from you guys, and I make sure to reply to everyone. Make sure to smash that subscribe button so we can hit that 1000 sub... Subscribe. I never thought I'd get this far. Thank you guys honestly, from the bottom of my heart, for the love and support. It's been a lifelong dream of mine to be a YouTuber, and I ain't stopping anytime soon. So if you made it this far, make sure to smash that subscribe button. Can we make it to 2,000? 100,000? Who knows? But until then, I'll see you guys next time. Ciao, fellas.